What's up everyone? DSP here and uh, we're going to be checking out a new game today and it's kind of funny because I remember there was a time probably around the late 90s to early 2000s okay when uh, pretty much every single company every single IP was trying to do some kind of a racing game and it all really started in the early 90s with Mario Kart on the Super NES which then went on to spawn a ridiculous amount of sequels and seeing the popularity of that a lot of other companies decided to follow suit and make their own racing style games I remember there was like a Crash Bandicoot one there was uh... there was Sonic has had them throughout the years in fact I believe Sonic's supposed to be coming out with one this year which is kind of funny I forgot about that and I didn't even reserve it so I have to kind of look it up to see when that's coming out uh, but uh... Uh, yeah, there was a time when the kart racing was like a, a, all the rage, and then I think it kind of died out around the time when Twisted Metal, you know, had its third or fourth <laughs> inst uh, game come out. I think people were finally like, all right, we've had it with the, the racing slash combat style uh, gameplay of these games. And of course, there's still the, the AAA ones, like the first party ones like Mario Kart, that still do pretty well every time they're released, but that's because that was really the original series. So, Little Big Planet Karting is really the first time in a long time that Sony is attempting to do a racing title of this sort. And I think that they kind of did do a good choice here by doing it with Little Big Planet because not only are you going to have the crazy racing element of, the, of a kart, kart racing game, but also the fact that you can create your own tracks. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that people loved about the Little Big Planet series. You can make your own stages, and I think that this is going to lead to some pretty insane stages and such when it finally comes down to it. So, let's dive into Little Big Planet Karting, and uh, let's see exactly what they've done with this game. I think what I'm going to do first here is, and no, I'm by the way, I'm not using the PlayStation Move. It's funny because you can buy a wheel accessory for this the PlayStation Move to use with this game. Now, let's recap. <clears throat> Mario Kart Wii came with a racing accessory, a wheel, but it was free. It came with the game, and there was no additional charge. For this game, they want you to go buy an accessory. No. How about that? No. We'll use a controller, okay? So, we're going to check the game out. We're probably, at first here, we're going to check out whatever the campaign is of the game, I'm sure it has like a standard uh, courses that you need to race on, just like Mario Kart that probably unlocks certain things in the game. I'm going to try to go through that first and check it out, and then later on I may be checking out either some online play. Maybe I'll try to see if people have already made some crazy racing uh, tracks online and what those are like. And uh, Panda Lee actually also got this game. She's checking it out today. So there's a possibility that in the future we're going to do some co-op racing, you know, race against each other and stuff. So, let's get this patch downloaded here and installed, and then let's check out Little Big Planet Karting. This will actually be good because I didn't do many racing, if any, racing games this year. I'm trying to think. I mean, there were some games that had racing elements, like Sleeping Dogs, but for the most part I haven't done any racing games this year. And uh, last week, Need for Speed Most Wanted came out, which, by the way, was rated terribly. But, you know, I always reserve my judgment for myself when I play the games. But uh, I didn't get to play it. Because Hurricane... Oops, I got it muted. My fault. Oh, good. It's installing to my hard drive without even telling me it had to. That's nice. Well, anyway, yeah, last week, Hurricane Sandy hit us, which basically knocked out my power for two days. And I was not able to get to Need for Speed. I have it, I just have not even booted the damn thing. So, being that this is a newer release, and honestly I am kind of more interested in this fun kart racer as opposed to a game that's trying to be, you know, a serious racing game, I wanted to check this one out, and so that's what we're doing. And so we sit here, waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting. Oh! 
Oh, well at least it told me now. <laughs> at least it notified me now that the battery was low. Because if I started playing and the controller died, I would have been pretty pissed. Alright. Get this fucker out. I can't believe that in this day and age, 2012, what is it, five years, four years? I think it's five years after the launch of this console, they still haven't figured out that people don't like mandatory installs before you play the game. This is a console, not a PC. What were they thinking when they designed this system? I have no clue. Since day one, I've been saying these fucking stupid game installs are so dumb. Honestly, what do they optimize? What do they optimize by having the game installed to the system? I've played cross-platform games that are on both PlayStation and Xbox, and I've played them on Xbox with no mandatory install, and I've never seen any problem with the graphics. So why do you need mandatory installs on PS3? Well, why does PS3 use Bluetooth that doesn't really work and sounds like shit? I guess there's a lot of questions that we could ask. <laughs> and now, now that the PlayStation, uh, if, you, if you haven't heard, I'm sure you've heard by now, but a couple weeks ago, uh, hackers finally figured out the universal code or whatever it is to hack the PlayStation 3, and it basically completely bypasses any pro copy protection, region protection, and therefore... The PlayStation 3 is now a pirate's paradise. As long as you're not, you know, going online with it, you can pretty much go on, on the internet now, download any game that you want as a ROM file, I don't know what it is, burn it on a, as a Blu-ray, pop it into your hacked PlayStation, and play any game for free. And it actually was announced a couple weeks ago that Sony is pretty much now going to have to pick up their production schedule and try to get the, the new PlayStation system, whatever it's going to be called or whatever, they're going to have to get it out there quickly because... There's a chance that now their sales are going to drop dramatically if this becomes more widespread and more people figure out how to do it. I mean, it was made public when it happened, but, you know, not everyone is exactly tech savvy. But then again, that doesn't stop people from doing it. I remember back in the day, back in the time of the Dreamcast, okay, um, the problem with the Dreamcast was there were a lot of games that came out in Japan way before they came out in America, and so people were finding ways to pirate the games. One of the one of the, the 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 biggest games on that system that took way too long to come out in America was Marvel vs. Capcom 2. It actually came out in Japan way earlier than in America. Of course, you couldn't read the menus or nothing. But what they ended up doing was people just ripped the ripped the game, leaked it on the internet. Then they created boot discs, okay, which allowed you to boot the system in a different mode than usual, and then you would. So you would boot the system, it would go to a loading screen and say, okay, now insert your pirated game. And you would insert a pirated game, and you would be able to play it. So everyone had games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 way before they ever even came out retail in America. I'm sure that hurt sales numbers. Um, and this is going to be a big problem with the PlayStation 3 as well if they don't figure out this shit. You know? So, you know what? I'm tired of talking. And this is really fucking stupid. And I hate to start the playthrough negatively, but let's face it. I think everyone's pretty much in agreement that this is stupid, that you have to do this when you play a PlayStation game. And it's, the other thing is, it's not all PlayStation games. It's only a few. So why do they decide that this game needs a mandatory install, but not another one, but the other one runs perfectly fine? You know what I mean? There have been games on PlayStation 3 without mandatory installs that run perfectly fine. So obviously there's a way to do it. It just seems these first-party titles just don't want to accept the fact that people don't want to fucking do a mandatory fucking install. God damn it, Sony. What the fuck is your problem? Alright, so I'm going to end the video here, and we'll come back once the fucking thing's booted and we can actually play. Holy shit.